G'day folks, today we're talking mushrooms and in particular the Queensland white oyster mushrooms we're trying to grow here. Uh, we've had a bit of a failure recently but I'll give you a bit of a look at that towards the end, a bit of a cautionary tale. Uh, but over the last week or so Bianca and I have set up a number of fruiting bags, a little fruiting jar and a couple of spawn jars. So I thought I'd give you a quick walk through them um, and yeah just show you uh, how we've created them and then in future clips we'll show you how we're feeding them up and fruiting them and that sort of thing. So to begin with we're using what's called the low-tech method. Uh, basically we're not using any pasteurization to sterilize the grow medium and we're using things like recycled paper pellets, uh, the hardwood uh, smoking pellets uh, that when you hydrate turn into sawdust. We've got some sugarcane mulch downstairs that we're going to try in the future and to sterilize them we're using calcium hydroxide. Basically what happens with that is it raises the pH and it kills off any um, competing fungal spores and bacteria and that sort of thing uh, which can uh, turn your bags pretty nasty which you'll um, see in a little while. Now I have had a couple of people say that our bags and our uh, jars have been spoiled because they look very grey. I can assure you uh, that's just the uh, recycled newspaper pellets we're using. You can see loads of little white mycelia growing all through those paper pellets so there's no issue with contamination as far as we can tell at this point in time. So without too much more rambling on I'll give you a bit of a gander at how we made up the fruiting bags and spawn jars and um, yeah I'll come back and show you uh, what happened with the last attempt after we're done there. So making up the fruiting bags was pretty easy uh, to begin with. I like to clean everything down with some isopropyl alcohol just to make sure there's no nasty bugs that are going to get in there and contaminate the bags. And then we're adding in a water to pellet ratio of six parts water to four parts pellet. So Bianca added in roughly 3.75 litres of water and as the water was going in I popped in roughly three and a half teaspoons of the calcium hydroxide just to make sure we knock any of the nasties in there on the head and then after that we dumped in 2.5 kilograms of the pellets roughly around about five pounds so that was given a good mix around made sure all the pellets were underwater and then popped the lid on the top and let it sit for five minutes so they could absorb all the moisture. So after about five minutes we're up we um, checked the pellets they're a bit hard to stir in the pot itself so I popped the lid back on gave it a good shake and Bianca gave it a bit of a stir to break up the lumps and it was ready to inoculate with our spawn. Now with the spawn we decided to do it in batches um, just to make it a little bit easier to add into the bags and to do that we weighed out an amount of the paper pellets we thought would fit in a Ziploc bag and then added 10% of that weight in the spawn grain. And just quickly for you folks who have never seen the grain spawn before, it is a grain that has been pasteurized, then inoculated by some spawn. Um, that spawn culture then feeds off the grain and creates those white hair-like mycelia that you can see moving from grain to grain. So back to the grain in the bowl, I crumbled it up nice and finely um, with some freshly sanitized hands of course and tried to spread it as uniformly as I could through the paper pellets in the bowl. And from there it was just emptied into the Ziploc bags and set to one side until all of them were full. Once the bags were full uh, we took a clean scalpel and cut a little gas exchange port within the plastic itself and then covered that over with some micropore tape and that micropore tape will allow gas to exchange from inside the bag to outside namely carbon dioxide and oxygen but at the same time will keep out any uh, mold spores. From there the bags were labelled with what variety of spawn we used and also the date. From there the bags were placed in a cool little storage area downstairs away from direct sunlight and in a couple of weeks time we'll feed them up with some wheat bran and a few weeks after that they should be ready to fruit. And I'll bring you along and give you a look at how we're feeding them up and they're fruiting once the time comes. So a couple of days later I made up some sawdust spawn jars using some smoking pellets, timber pellets, as the medium. Now this time around though we use a slightly different ratio. Uh, some people will say 45-55, that's pellets to water. I just went with a rough 50% of each and actually added in maybe a little bit more water than 50% by weight. And again to sterilize the medium I added in roughly half a teaspoon of the calcium hydroxide. Now I actually used warm water because the warm water expands the pellets a lot faster than cold water. Someone actually asked why I did that on the previous clip. It just takes forever with the cold water. So pop a tea towel over the top of that, set it to one side and let it cool down to room temperature. Now I added in roughly around about 10% by weight of the spawn into the sawdust mix and then broke up the grain spawn and mixed it as evenly as I could through the sawdust. 
The sawdust was then just added into a couple of ball mason jars, filled them up in layers and used uh, the base of a sterilized jar just to compress the sawdust down a bit. Uh, filled it uh, to around about, I'd say 35 mil or about an inch and a quarter from the top. I've drilled some holes in the lids of these guys and covered them over with some micropore tape again, just to allow for that gas exchange. Screwed the lid on and they joined their fruiting bags downstairs. And again, in a couple of weeks time, I'll give these guys a bit of a feed with some wheat bran and then a few more weeks down the track, we'll split them up to make four fruiting bags. Now I also decided to make up a little bit of a fruiting jar, just as a bit of an experiment to see how it goes. For this one, I used a yogurt culture tub um, that I had drilled some holes in. I think they're roughly around about 20 mil or three quarter inch holes, three of them around the sides and one in the lid. And again, they were just covered with some micropore tape just to allow for the gas exchange. Now the mix for this one, we're back to the paper pellets. So it's four part pellets to six part of the hydrated lime water mix. Let that sit for a while so the water and hydroxide mix could hydrate the pellets and then came and added in some spawn, roughly again about 10% by weight. That was added into the jar, tapped it down, tried to compress it a little bit, screwed the top on and it joined the other spawn jars downstairs. And again, that one will be fed up in a couple of weeks time before we allow it to start to fruit. As I said before those clips, I will be following along the, um, the feeding and then the fruiting of those fruit bags and then also the splitting of those spawn jars. So they'll pop up in clips later on. And if you do want to catch those clips, all you have to do is click on that subscribe button down there and then pound on the bell icon once it appears. And YouTube will hopefully send you notifications once those clips are up. And now on to uh, what happened with the last batch of um, yeah, fruiting bags I tried to make up. Uh, we were splitting a spawn jar that we made previously. Unfortunately, I think that spawn jar was just a little bit too out of date. Uh, it was well over um, three months old when we split it and popped it into those bags of sawdust. And yeah, nothing happened. The mycelia didn't take off at all. So what I decided to do was use some of the grain spawn in that same medium, hoping it would still be sterile enough and create some fruiting bags that way. Unfortunately though, uh, that wasn't to be. Uh, some other contamination got in there. And as you can see, the bag turned out very moldy indeed. So it was basically, yeah, just a write off and it's going to go in a compost cage I'll be making up in a couple of days down the back. So that was a bit of a lesson learned. Use the spawn jar a lot sooner. Don't let it sit so long. And it probably would have helped if I gave it a feed with some wheat bran along the way, uh, just to um, reinvigorate the mycelia, get it growing a little bit more before I um, put it down into the sawdust. Now to give you a bit of a quick look at um, what's going on with the spawn jar, well, this went in um, three days ago, actually two days ago. As you can see, the mycelia has already started to reach out and is starting to colonize that sawdust there. So we're really happy with that. Uh, there's no green in it whatsoever, unlike the last lot. So yeah, pretty chuffed with that. And here's a bit of a look at the fruiting jar. As you can see, there's a load more mycelia through there compared with the sawdust. I think what it comes down to is the food is just a little bit more available in the recycled paper pellets. It's already been, you know, basically timber that's partially broken down. So probably in about uh, two weeks time, uh, I'm going to crack this open, uh, feed it up with some wheat bran and then let it sit uh, for a little while longer. And then yeah, pull off these little uh, side tabs here and hopefully get some nice flushes of oyster mushrooms from it. As for the fruiting bags, I can tell you they are well and truly colonized. They've actually turned into a little bit of a log uh, loads of mycelia growing through the newspaper there. These guys have been done for about a week now, um, been in the bag. So another two or three weeks, these guys will get a feed as well with some wheat bran. And then, yeah, we'll let them rest for a couple more weeks and then we'll cut some more little holes in the plastic themselves and they'll be uh, ready to fruit. So that's the plan with these guys here. Um, yeah, so, so far, all is well and happy with these guys and no contamination can be found. I have been a little bit hard pushed recently trying to reply to all your comments just because everyone being in lockdown, the views have gone through the roof. Thank you very much. Uh, so it is a bit hard to get back to your wall, but I will at least um, heart the comment as soon as I've read it. So just to let you know, I am still reading the comment sections. Uh, if you do like these clips, feel free to share them around. These as well as the aquaponics clips to your family and friends. Might give them something to do uh, while they're in lockdown. Huge shout out also needs to go to you fabulous folks who are supporting us through the Farm Your Own Yard website and the YouTube membership platform. Thank you very much guys, really do appreciate it. 
I will pretty much all leave it there though. I do hope you're all well and happy and your gardens are booming and aquaponics. And I will catch you all next clip. Cheers folks, take it easy.